Terrariums are captivating, miniature ecosystems, encapsulating lush greenery within glass, showcasing nature's beauty in a confined space. That is pretty much it for smaller, sealed terrariums. However, for larger, unsealed terrariums, there are several components that are necessary to ensure its survival. When I started making my first terrarium, I struggled to find good videos and information, detailing the best products and how to set them up. In this video, I aim to detail the four essential systems that form the backbone of a healthy terrarium, nurturing its delicate balance and sustaining its vibrant life. Beginning with the rain slash misting system, in a closed terrarium, water evaporates, condenses on the glass and then falls back into the soil. In an unsealed terrarium, water just evaporates, leading to less water in circulation. There are two methods to counteract this, a spray bottle or a misting system. A spray bottle works fine for smaller terrariums, but for larger ones, some problems arise, such as inconsistent water distribution, a potential for concentrated mould growth, and the fact that it just takes time and you may forget. These are all reasons why you may consider a programmable misting system, but all you need to do is refill a tank of water. This all sounds lovely, however, there is a major downside. Misting systems are expensive and loud. This is the first misting system I bought, and it was awful. The one I use now for my paludarium is an Exoterra Monsoon Multi 2, and it is great. The duration of misting and the intervals between are all pretty customizable, and the water tank is included. The piping then leads up the back of my paludarium, splitting into two branches going over the top of the terrarium with two nozzles piercing the canopy for a clean aesthetic. Misting systems at the cheapest go for around £40. Mine was £110 and the most expensive ones such as the Mist King range from £185 to over £400. The cheaper you go, the less customization you get, the weaker and louder the pump gets, and the amount of nozzles you can connect decreases. An important note, all the misting systems I've come across require reverse osmosis water, or pure water, to keep the nozzles clean and prevent clogging. Misting systems are an incredible addition to a terrarium, and the simulation of rain showers is much more appealing than a spray bottle. The misting system I would recommend for the average terrarium is the Monsoon Solo 2 Programmable Misting System by Exoterra. Next we have the Air Circulation System. Now this is relatively simple. Most large terrariums have a mesh covered canopy that allows for circulation. In most situations, this is fine. However, a small fan pumping air in will go a long way, especially for stopping mold. The main consideration with this is the sound of the fan, which is why I would recommend a silent PC fan. I currently have two small modular fans connected via USB, operated manually. Many people are fans on constantly. However, for me, this isn't necessary, so my fans are on every so often. If your terrarium doesn't have a mesh canopy, then a fan will be mandatory, and you will have to drill a hole into the glass. Now for probably the most important system, the temperature system, especially if you are keeping reptiles. Reptiles, such as geckos, are exothermic, meaning they rely on external heat sources to regulate their body temperature. A terrarium heating system is crucial for maintaining the optimal temperature gradient within the enclosure, meaning it's hotter in one area and cooler in another. There are many ways to heat a terrarium. The three I'm going to cover are heat lamps, heat mats, and ceramic heat emitters. Firstly, these all need to be connected to a thermostat, which uses a probe inside the terrarium to monitor the temperature. I would recommend one of these day slash night dimming thermostats, because they're very intuitive and can simultaneously manage the lighting system and the day-night cycle. Many different brands sell them, but they're all the same. Starting off with heat lamps, which is what I currently use. There are many advantages of using heat lamps, such as the creation of a basking spot high in the terrarium, which effectively creates a temperature gradient, where it is cooler at the bottom. Some bulbs can also supply the necessary UV light that many reptiles require. This, however, is where the problems start. In order for the terrarium to be heated, there has to be light. Therefore, when it is night, no heat can be supplied. This correlation is fine if your reptiles can survive at room temperature, but if their low temp is above your room temp, then this can cause problems. On top of this, suspending the bulb above the terrarium takes up a lot of space. 
If your room temperature is high enough, then a heat lamp may be a suitable heat source for your terrarium. You could also combine it with another heat source, such as a heat rock, for when the lamp is deactivated. Another option is a heat mat, supplying heat all day long. These are not compatible with wooden terrariums or mesh canopies. Heat mats are most commonly placed on the underside of an enclosure, warming the substrate from the bottom, creating a horizontal temperature gradient as the mat only goes under a region of the terrarium. This gives your animals belly heat, but eliminates a basking spot. The warm substrate can be dangerous for any insects or microfauna that may require a low temperature and live in the substrate. I originally considered using a heat mat, However, it was incompatible with my paludarium because not only did it have a drainage layer, but also a water layer. So all the heat mat would do is warm the water. Heat mats can be useful for a wider, less tall terrarium without a drainage layer, providing evenly distributed heat through the substrate. The final option I'm going to cover are ceramic heat emitters. These are exactly the same as heat lamps, except they don't emit light. They're typically more expensive and a lot more powerful. The main disadvantage of ceramic heat emitters is that they take up lots of space while only providing heat. They also can dry out the terrarium's air, reducing humidity levels. There are many ways to heat a terrarium that I have not covered, but ultimately for most terrariums, I would recommend a heat lamp monitored and controlled by a digital thermostat. Finally, we have the lighting system, which will also be controlled by the same digital thermostat. However, as this thermostat can only control two plugs, for me at least, I found it useful to connect an extension lead, so I could connect more lights. The lighting system is in charge of creating a realistic day night cycle, making the terrarium visually appealing, photosynthesis and subsequent growth of plants, sufficient UVB for reptiles to synthesize vitamin D3, and for behavioral stimulation of animals. TLDR, it's very important. Choosing the right lighting system involves understanding specific needs of the plants and animals in your terrarium, and their varying light requirements in terms of duration, spectrum, and intensity. Do some research and see what your terrarium requirements are. For my paludarium, I started off with an Arcadia Pro T5, which created a UV-rich basking area, but didn't look very good, as it was just one colour. To supplement this, I later bought an aquarium light, which offered a range of colours and customization options, such as a light tan blue when it's raining. Furthermore, it can be mounted above the terrarium, which is especially useful for open terrariums and saving space. You may also want to consider the type of light. Fluorescent lights provide a balanced spectrum suitable for a wide range of plants and animals, while LED lights are energy efficient and highly customizable. Lighting systems are an integral part of the terrarium, often overlooked but play a key role in sustaining the plants and ecosystem within. So there you go, the four essential systems necessary for a healthy terrarium. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section below. If you want to see me make the paludarium in this video, or another terrarium, watch these.